This is Jenny Hendrick, and this is episode 11. Okay to say. On Energetic Living. Come with me to the Energetic Clubhouse. This may be, I think, other than episode 7, one of my longest uh, podcast episodes, because I have some things I need to say that's on my mind. Now, I'm recording this on a Wednesday, on a Thursday afternoon. This will be airing Friday night, so that you know. Alright. All right, now listen to me. I want you to grab whatever beverage you have. Um... Somewhere around here, I got my my trusty mint tea. <laughs> All points aside, we need to talk about something that's very sensitive. Now, we know we talked about doing hard things. We all talked about. Anyway, we are going to go ahead and go over to the Mental Health Center. There is going to be a future-related episode on this uh, for my podcast, LDS Hasten. I'm restarting that particular podcast sometime in March, so that you know. But I want you to know that part part of energetic living, I think, is that we need to take mental health seriously. And so, we're going to, we're going to... On the way over to the Mill Health Center, where we where I meet into a, a very special, I would say, a very special mental health specialist of mine that I've been seeing for 10 years now. I suffer from bipolar disorder. And having a mental illness, there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with saying that you have it. Too many people have a stigma about it. They're afraid. They're scared. I know I was. I knew something was wrong with me when I, ever since I was 13 years old. Really, uh, more deeper than that, perhaps even early childhood. Uh, around the time that I was maybe five or six years old, I seen something was wrong with me. But especially around the time, at ages of 12 and 13. I didn't know what it was. I felt like it was some kind of maybe personality flaw. I didn't know what it was. And then, in in 1997, I was diagnosed with a major depression with psychotic features. Now, psych- psychotic, in some cases, may mean you know they even really want to hurt people, but that's not the type of psychotic psychosis I have. Sometimes it does involve temporary issues, but most time with me, it is a depressive psychosis. And I'm not going to go into the particulars here because that's, this is not the time or the place. But I'm not the only one. There's many great, there's many greats in history that have had it. Theodore Roosevelt had a bipolar disorder. Winston Churchill. I'm almost willing to bet that Abraham Lincoln had bipolar disorder. They said he had depression, but I'm willing to say that it was deeper. And I won't go into the details as to why. That is up to the annals of history. But the fact of the matter is we all know that mental health is a sensitive subject. And yet, I know you don't hear about this in energetic living, but sometimes we have our low points. We have our low points. Okay, and... Once I, once we get done with this man, this man is a great man. Okay, he's he's one of the great mental health experts that I've encountered, having been diagnosed for nearly twenty four years with mental illness, and I had all these wrong ideas about you know if you have mental illness, it means you get locked up. 
Don't forget, but that's not that's not what it is. Anyway, I digress. Here we go. I want you to listen to this gentleman and what he has to say. So the question becomes why we differentiate mental illness separately from other conditions such as hypertension and diabetes. We must visualize mental illness as a different form, a condition of different form of medical problem that instead of being affected a bodily organs is affecting mental, our brain. That visualization may help us remove the stigma and seek more help. Number one reason for people not seeking psychiatric help is first of all not recognizing it and also having a huge stigma against uh, seeking psychiatric help or even being recognized that having a psychiatric condition. If you're finding something is wrong, you ne don't necessarily have to see a psychiatrist. Seek help wherever and wherever you can. We have just one life to live and I think it should be lived to the maximum potential of what uh, God or genes or whatever you want to say has endowed us and that should be our goal. I'm Dr. Jane. It's okay to say Okay, so we're going to get down to brass tacks here. You've heard me talk about we should we should do better to think of mental illness as like high blood pressure or cancer or diabetes or any other physical illness. There's nothing wrong with that. And once again, I want to say something real quick. I know that we all are suffering from the consequences of COVID-19. Okay, COVID-19. And I'm going to go ahead and just say it the way it is. COVID-19 is the devil's virus. It's from the pits of hell. It's from the fires of hell. Okay, I'm going to call it exactly as it is. And I know this because it's created what I'm afraid is a mental health crisis in this country and in this world. I'll be honest with you. Because of the limitations of social distancing, the COVID, I have felt more cooped up, and in some cases, more unhappy. Now, this isn't a time for woe me, poor me type thing. Energetic living I means sometimes you have to say that it's okay to not be okay. And then turn it all around. I want to teach you something. That goes along with the. Um, counseling and medication. Whatever else you might need for mental illness. And just really know this. You can get the, the matter of. Emotional authenticity. And intelligence. Okay. Emotional authenticity and intelligence. We're going back to the clubhouse and talk. Emotional authenticity and intelligence is key. It's very important for times like these. No doubt. No doubt. Because I know that there's, there's a lot of lonely people out there. And we think, oh, we just, we just got to suck it up. Okay. Because sadly, even today, even though we've had these advances, even though we've had, even though we've had all this awesome stuff coming up, we, we, we have a problem here in our reactive culture. It's like divided focus. We're told to either, oh, you just suck it up. Or we're told to be manby pamby, be reactive. Both of those are reactive. Face it. Face these challenges because you know we all know that life is hard. 
I have a stance that I do. And I wish you could see me right now as I do it. A stance that I do sometimes. And I, I, need, to, I need to do this on skin to recenter myself. I'm going to put down my mint tea. And I'm going to throw my shoulders back. Sit up as straight as I can. Are you guys ready? Yeehaw! I need to find my inner yeehaw. That says, hey, stand strong. Be confident. When you have the, the, this problem where it's not okay, flip the switch. Turn on confidence. Turn on a chance to have the best optimum mental health. Because we're, we're all called to be of the divine potential that God has called us to be. I, I love Dr. James, don't get me wrong. I, I, he's, he's, he's one of the best psychiatrists in this state in my book. But I have to say that we are called to do our best. We are called to be our best. And sometimes that, that means that we have to admit that it's okay to not be okay. And this goes to all you people that are lonely and suffering. I want to say, tell you this. I know this is a motivational podcast in many ways, but I want to say this, okay? This is raw, deep content coming to you live. God loves you. God loves you. Let it sink into your soul. Because sometimes, you know, I know lately, this morning I was I was kind of down and lonely and didn't know how to handle it. And so I, I went out walking in my neighborhood and I was talking to my father and he said, and I said, right now, the way I'm feeling the loneliness, I feel like that you're all I have. And he said straight up, he said, Jimmy, this point in time, I'm all you need. Now I know you're sitting here like, whoa, this sounds so deep. This is pie in the sky and you die until you die. And no, listen to me. It's not. Because you have a choice. You have a choice where you're going to go. You have a choice where you're going to move. I sang that song in that last episode to let you know where I stand. It's time for energetic living Christians to take a stand. Especially on mental health and admit that it's okay to not be okay. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. We're all built with our faults and foibles. It's we, we are in and have chosen to be in the fallen world. And because of that, I know we, we have our difficulties. We have our difficulties. But let me tell you something. You know that I developed these podcasts because I deeply care about my audience. I deeply care about my audience. And I want them to have the best. Not this reactive eye. Oh, just shut up and suck it up. Or, uh, or you know, just murmur and complain all the time. Because reality, balance is in between. Get in the scriptures, okay? You get in the scriptures. You get in the scriptures. You get what you need. You tap into what you need. And I'm going to give you some practical advice. Seek counseling. Go, go seek a counselor. If you can't get access to a counselor right out, try, talk to a trusted friend or a spiritual leader. And if all else fails, talk to your Heavenly Father. Talk to God. He loves you more than anyone. He loves you more than you will ever know. And I'm just bearing my heart and my spirit with you right now. And I know some of you are like, oh man. This is supposed to be about energetic living. I didn't mean for Jimmy. I didn't want Jimmy to be, to be all weepy here. I'm just telling you, sometimes having energetic living means you have energy. You live strenuously through the hard things. Remember? Do hard things. Remember that episode? Remember the episode Heal Our Lands? Remember that? Remember the leadership circle? This is where it all builds together, people. This is where it all builds together. 
Hope you begin to understand that. Take care and God bless.